Hey guys, Derek here to do my Tough 12 recap from last night. Uh, you know, Tough, I, did, I watched the Ultimate Fighter finale live and why DVR the Strike Force event, which I will talk a little bit about later. Um, the first fight of the night, Nan Fam, Leonard Garcia. You know, I'm just like the rest of you guys, don't understand. Leonard Garcia may, has get some luck when it comes to judges, don't you think? I think it's about four or five snail that he's got the decision where he shouldn't have got it. Uh, Nam Fam looked good, though. Uh, I don't know I predicted Leonard Garcia to win this fight, uh, but Nan Fam, you know, he put the pressure on, and you know, in my opinion, won the second, third round easily. And you can even make the case that he won the first round. Leonard Garcia, you know, that guy's. You know, he's excited. He is what he is. He's going to throw everything he's got. He's going to make it exciting. And, you know, he, you know, he is what he is. But nonetheless, Leonard got the decision. Um, you know, I still think they're both. Leonard definitely going to stay, uh, going to keep staying with the victory. And Nan Fam, I don't see any reason for him to be cut. So we'll see both of these guys back in the octagon. Second five of the night, Rick Story, Johnny Hendricks. My prediction was for Johnny Hendricks to win this fight by decision. Uh, I was surprised that Hendricks could not take him down. I thought maybe the first round would go exactly how it would because Story's a Story's a very tough guy. You know, he's very strong, and I thought you know, but he don't have the best gas tank in the world. So come the second, third round, Hendricks would be able to get the fight down to the ground. Story impressed me in this fight. You know, I, Story's going to, you know, Story got this. Got the win by decision. Story's a he's a legit dude, and I would like to see Rick Story maybe Diego Sanchez, maybe see that fight next. But nonetheless, Rick Story got the decision. Third fight of the night: Damian Maya, Kendall Grove. I predicted Damian Maya. I think I I don't know if submission second third round submission was my prediction. Uh, he didn't get the submission. He did get the decision. Fight went exactly how I thought it would go. The key thing in this fight for me is Damian Maya. He's he's getting bigger, guy. I mean, for his strength wise, you can tell he's putting on some muscle. So it's you know, and I think his striking's improving a lot. Actually, I thought the third round he outpointed Kendall Grove on the feet. Uh, the fight I want to see next for Damian Maya is a uh, Chael Sonnen. Let's see that rematch. Chael's been cleared to fight in March. Uh, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard, but. He said he only got suspended for six months for the steroid thing because apparently his doctor was okay in it. So he he Sonnen will be back in March, and I would love to see Damian Maya Chael Sonnen because I think for Chael Sonnen to get another shot at the title, let's see him beat a guy with great jiu-jitsu because that's Chael's biggest weakness, and I think he has to with the steroid controversy. I think Chael needs to win a fight before getting a title shot. So Damian Maya Chael Sonnen. Co-main event, Stephen Bonner, Igor Parais. You know, what did I say, guys? My my prediction was that Stephen Bonner was going to take this fight to the ground because that's where he had a significant advantage. He didn't get the submission, uh, but, you know, he ended up getting the decision win. Funny thing about this fight, Steve Mazzagotti. Gosh. It's amazing that this guy's still allowed to be in the cage and protecting the safety of fighters. I mean, it's... I mean... I hate to keep bashing on a guy, but, you know, him more than any other referees, same crap, same crap, same crap, and it's 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 getting to the point now that where it's just hysterical when you see Steve Mazzagotti in the cage that, you know, just something's going to happen with that guy. You know, Stephen Bonner got kneeing the head on the ball, which we can debate the rules another day, which, I, you know, all these things that they got points taken away from, in my opinion, should be legal. But nonetheless, Stephen Bonner got the win. You know, he's won two in a row now. I think, for me, I would like to see Stephen fight the loser of Tiago Silva, Brandon Barra. I think that, to me, that... Because I don't want to see Bonner keep fighting these guys that aren't top-notch fighters. You know, Bonner's a top-notch fighter. He just had a rough stretch there. And let's put him against the loser of Brandon Barra, uh, Tiago Silva, see what happens. Main event of the night, Jonathan Brookins, Michael Johnson. My prediction was Michael Johnson, TKO, knockout, first round. And it's funny because I was, that was going to be the fight because going in, Johnson was a plus 190 underdog. And I was going to, I'm going to put money on I'm going to put some money on Johnson, make me some, some money. And 
when it got time to play Call in my book, and I thought the Jose Auto fight with keep that was Jonathan Brookins played in my mind, and it kept me from so I didn't put any money on any fights last night. And that first round, I got sick to my stomach when Michael Johnson was just teeing off on Brookins. I was like, shit, you know, I should have put money on this guy. But nonetheless, you know, second, third round, Brookins fight was able to get the fight to the ground. And I'll say this, and you guys, all my videos, you're going to hear me say this. I can't understand, you know, there's things in life that you, you know, you just don't have the capability of. You know, you can't be the best boxer. You know, you might not be able to be the best wrestler. You might not be able to have the best jiu-jitsu. But the one thing that any human being can control, unless you have bad asthma issues, is your cardio. I mean, all that takes, that's work and mentality. That's what cardio is. It's just you going in and putting forth the extra work. And Michael Johnson, first round, dominated this fight. And his cardio, his lack of work, his lack of preparation for fighting, has cost him of being the next ultimate fighter. You know, it, it, it drives me crazy, guys. So, you know, let me know what you guys think about the cardio issues. If you may, maybe I'm overlooking something. But, you know, I've always, in my life, you know, you know, if I get tired of doing something, you know, there's a way that you, you keep doing it and you increase your endurance every time you work out, no matter what you do. And I, I just don't understand how these professional athletes, and hopefully as this sport continues it to evolve over the next three, four, five years, this is an issue we won't have to talk about is cardio. Because I think it's getting to the point now, in my opinion, you watch these 135, these 145ers, and these lightweights, and, you know, Cain Velasquez is a heavyweight, so weight has nothing to do with it, how much weight you're carrying out. The, the work you put in is what matters, so that's a sore topic for me, but nonetheless, Brookings got it, he won the fight, and I, I hope it all I see Brookings, I had it on here, the loser of, uh, the loser of however you want to go, Jeremy Stevens, Marcus Davis, I think that's a good first fight for Jonathan Brookings, I think he can beat either one of those guys. And both of those guys have names, and I think that would be a good fight. That would be a good way to introduce him post the Ultimate Fighter series. Um, before I get off here, I want to talk a little bit about Strike Force last night. And the only reason I'm going to do it, you know, I watch Strike Force more is because I'm an MMA fan. But you know, every single time, you know, I, you, the main websites that I follow, guys, because I cannot stand sure dog, is MMA Junkie. MMA, MMA Mania and Bloody Elbow. And last night, as soon as the damn Strike Force was show was over, which was only on about an hour, hour and a half, I DVR'd it. Uh, they started talking about it. Strike Force knocks out UFC in the first round. Strike Force, can they can can this promotion compete with the UFC guys? Let, let's compare. I mean, last night was it Ultimate Fighter finale for the UFC and Strike Force had one-sided matchups from the get-go. I mean, honestly, I mean, they were exciting. I'm not complaining. It was a great show, but to say that Strike Force is anywhere near the label of UFC is ridiculous, and I wish you journalists out there and you guys on here on YouTube would stop this crap because the UFC is where the big boys play. You know, Gilbert Melendez, as good as he can say he is, you know, if you're as great as you say you are, get out of your Strike Force contract contract and come fight legitimate guys time after time after time. Sorry if I seem like a UFC nut hugger, but the truth hurts. Um, it was a great night of fights for Strike Force. I enjoyed it, but like I said, they were all one-sided fights from the get-go. I mean, Matt Lennon and Robbie Lawler, who didn't see that happening? Paul Daly, Scott Smith, who didn't see that happening? Dan Henderson, uh, Bob Lou, who didn't see that happening? You know, so... I thought the Mike Kyle dropping Antonio Silva was interesting, but you know, Silva knocking him out on the ground was what you expected. So with all that being said, with all the great shit that everybody keeps talking about Strike Force, it was a good show. But did you really learn anything new about those fighters that you didn't know? Did they did you see any progression in any of those guys' careers? No, because it's what you expected. The matchups were made that way. Great night of fights, guys. That's what my only rant on the Strike Force issue is. Hey, great Strike Force is a great promotion. I'll support them, but let's not put those guys on the same level or the guys that go in there and fight legitimate fighters, fight after fight after fight. Peace out, guys.